Jack Andrews uh, rode in our first race of the afternoon. Festen de Soir didn't quite work out, but I'm sure. Just going on about how lovely it is here. Uh, as uh, Love to see a big smile on your face, even if things didn't go quite according to plan <laughs> yeah. in race one. No, it's, um, it's, it's different down here anyway, but no, yeah. it's nice to be here anyway. So. As, you know, I'm just thinking of alternative race courses that you'd be at a lot, say Chatsley Corbett or Maysmore, those type of places. They're a lot more straightforward than Fleet Park, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a lot more agricultural around, around somewhere like here. Um, no, we, we, there's a couple of tracks around us, but we're, like you said, we're a lot more straightforward. Normally it's two bends and two straights and a line of fences, but no, it's very different here anyway. So if you were to pick out one thing at Fleet that you're particularly, is it the tight top bend or is it the ups and downs or the steep finish? Yeah, the, the, the top bend is very, very tight, um, swings you off quite badly. And, but no, it's, I think the only way to describe it is like a bit of a roller coaster. You're either <laughs> up or you're down. So um, no, no, it's, it's different, yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you don't mind me saying you were down, well, not literally, but you were third in the first race the horse quite well fancied but first time first time for you yeah third he, um, he ran okay probably he's, he's not very experienced and I, and I imagine around here you need a horse with plenty of experience to deal with all the tight bends and, and the up and down parts of the, the track and whatnot. but um, he's ran okay and I'm sure we'll find one for him by the end of the year and uh, your brother-in-law Tom Ellis is the, the trainer I suppose when you and Tom come to Devon and there is betting here today. People say, aha, they haven't come here lovely as the Devon Air is. They haven't come here for the Devon Air. <laughs> no, I suppose not. But um, no, maybe, maybe we just felt there was a, probably a couple of opportunities here that we, we had a couple of horses that probably needed a soft opportunity. But um, I don't, I'm not sure that first race was a very competitive race. And um, there's another maiden on later on that we've got a horse down here for. But um, no, it's just nice to come down. There's no other meetings on today, and we thought we'd take the opportunity. Yeah, well, very, very, very good to see you. So, just, just, um, just tell us. Uh, so, you're in the last race of the day as well, are you? Yeah, the Rosary Flyer. Um, oh yeah. He was actually a very expensive store horse, and um, he was in that. He was entered in that that race just gone. Wasn't yeah, he? he was. Yeah, and we That's decided right. to plump with that horse there and go in a two and a half with the other horse. But um, no, he was an expensive store horse and had a few runs for Dan Skelton, but was unsuccessful and. Um, he passes, passed him on to us to go point him with and he was disappointed at Mollington. We got blinkers on him today and um, I'm not holding out too much hope, <laughs> but I think the ability is there if he puts it in. So, And Jack, you're here, um, I imagine, on a bit of a crested wave because everyone loves to ride a winner at Cheltenham and you did that last night. Yeah, I'm sure that's a, a smile that won't be wiped off my face for a long time. It's, it's something you grow up wanting to do your whole life. And, um, no so it was your first one? First winner at Cheltenham, yeah, and to achieve it on that horse yesterday was it just made it even more special. Um, because he, me and Gina bought him on a whim at Doncaster Sales for 800 quid with one buy, one bid, and um, he's just been unbelievably six years old. He's won four points and 200 chases, and he's only been beaten once. And um, no, you know, he, he means a lot to us, the little horse, and um, he's given his owners a lot of fun. So yeah, and so describe what it's like even with no crowd, even with no festival, but an important night for the point-to-pointing and hunter-chasing world yeah, to be led into the winner's enclosure definitely. there. Definitely, that, that hunter-chase evening is our bread and butter. Um, it's what we all work towards and, it, and it's a big, it's a not a finale because it's not the end of the year, but it is a, it's a big stage for us. And um, no, a winner there, no crowd or, or, or whatnot, it, it means just as much. So. And it was called, it's one of these sort of slightly tongue-twisting French horses, Fumé du Derry. Yeah, Fumé du Derry. What, do you, what do, you call, do you call him Fumé? No, he just, he just gets called Champ at home. Because, um, <laughs> when we first bought him, we, we originally thought if we could win a maiden with him, we'd be doing well. And he just blossomed when he came to us. And I end up jokingly calling him the champion and it just stuck. And he just gets called, he's just nicknamed the champ now. And he's actually, his real first name when we got him was Nick, because we, we jokingly said we nicked him from the sales. <laughs> and... Um, so no, but he's he's been a remarkable horse for us. Oh, it's it's lovely to hear that these these type of traditions of nicknames and uh, things like that, even at a big operation like yours, they they they're still about. Yeah, definitely, and it, and it I think it it showcases that even a big yard like us that has a lot of selling horses and and we do it for a business is we're still buying these horses that stay point to point in and are are running in these for, throughout their progression. They go maidens restricted and speed. We're not just winning maidens and chucking them into the national hunt yards. We're we are supporting the whole sport, so um, I, I think it's important that we do showcase that as well. So you're enjoying it as much as anyone else? Yeah, exactly, and um, people say about these young horses and selling them and whatnot, but like us, we, we might have 10 young horses. For every 10 young horses we have, we have 20 form horses to run throughout the year, so um, um, I think it's important to balance the, the, the system now and, and to encourage all, all aspects of it. So. 
And that was your tenth winner of the point to point season. Uh, well, it's my it was I've had nine point to pointing, and that was a hundred chase, but it obviously doesn't count yeah, towards. Yeah, but, so, but, but the tenth. one here today was that the tenth here today? But I was third, wasn't I? Oh, sorry, sorry I'm going back. I'm going. I'm, I, you win so many, you see. Uh, but 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 what? But it does take me on. To, I do apologise. But um, it takes me on to the fact you are on nine point-to-point mm -hmm. -point winners for the season. Will on Will Biddick thirteen, James King fourteen at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so it, it could be quite a little. I know that um, that Will's predicting quite a good tussle between all of you over the next four or five weeks. Yeah, it's great that um, there is a few people in contention to to win the title because for a couple of years there, uh, Will was just running away of it and no fault of his own he, he, he was just riding very well and riding for a very powerful stable and um, it's just it's like the National Hunt um, Jockeys Championship this year with Brian, Harry and Harry Cobden and um, it's great to see so much competition and, and fighting it out right to the end and I'm, I'm a bit back but I'm certainly not giving it up yet well so. you're, you're well in touch yeah, I'm in touch but um, I had a couple of lean travelling well yeah I had, <laughs> I had a lean couple of weekends I just kept hitting the crossbar and uh, just being frustrated but no, I had a good weekend last weekend and hopefully I can build on that so and your brother-in-law Harry, now the champion jockey. Yeah. So how how good for the family is that to have seen him do that? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, like he um, he spent he spent about three months of um, at back at mum and dad's place, back at home in Luton, when he I think he rode eight winners the one year, and he was literally living at home with us for three months, considering whether it was still viable to be a jockey. And um, no one works harder than Harry, and he's just driven to to do what he does and. Um, no one deserves it more, and I might be biased, but no one does deserve it more than him. He, he's worked every every inch for it. And I guess can't wait for the middle of June, and then you can have a right party to celebrate. Yeah, exactly. He's, <laughs> I think it's already in the planning anyway. So. I bet it is. Yeah. I bet it is. Well, look, uh, I, I uh, gave you a winner slightly early there, but maybe maybe it's a prediction of what's to come I, later on. I fingers crossed. I, I hope you're right. So. Uh, excellent. Well, lovely lovely to see you today. Cheers. Thank you very much. Uh, Jack you. Andrews uh, joining us. We have a we have a microphone stand here, and uh, we have to to change it. Uh, slightly the position of the microphone uh, depending on who the guest is and it stays pretty much for most of the afternoon uh, with uh, at a fairly sort of standard uh, position goes down a bit after the pony races so we can chat to a couple of people uh, after the pony races and then for Jack it has to go right up into the sky again because as you can see uh, he's very tall indeed